everyone, and welcome back to ASP.NET Core 1.0. My name is Steve Bishop, and in this video, we're going to be continuing our discussion on ASP.NET Core identity roles. So in the last video, we talked about how to add roles to our application. But now we want to start actually filtering out the access to the different sections of our application using those roles that we assign. It turns out this is a pretty simple thing to do, so this video shouldn't be too long. Let's go ahead and hop right into Visual Studio and get started. So I went ahead and added a few additional roles to our application in our seed method. So I went to our user role seed class, and under the seed method, I added an admin and employee role to our application. And I did this just simply by copying and pasting what we did here to find if a member was there and add it if they weren't there. But really, I probably should have, you know, refactored this out to its own separate function and called it three times with, uh, you know, the three different types of roles. But, eh, whatever. I felt like being lazy and just doing it this way for right now. Anyway, moving on. Now that we know that we've got those three roles in here, how can we use them to our advantage to filter out the different sections of our application? Well, if we go to our member home controller, you may recall that we added this authorize attribute to the index action and the access granted action. So we have authorize and we have authorize. Now, what this authorize attribute did was it checked to see whether or not we were logged in. And if we weren't logged in, we couldn't get in here and it just redirected us back to the login page. Well, it turns out that the authorize attribute has a few additional tricks up its sleeve. We can actually pass in some arguments here. We could pass in active authentication schemes. We could specify a policy. Or look at this. We can specify some roles. And these are all optional. So I don't have to put any of them in here. But the one that I'm looking for is definitely the roles. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that roles... I'm going to say member, okay? You have to be a member or in the member role in order to access the index action. So I could do that both here on our index action or, uh, and I could also put it down here on our access granted action. Now, similarly to how we did this with the authorized attribute before, where we took the authorized attribute and we stuck it up at the top of the definition of our class, our member home controller class, we can do the same thing. So we don't have to necessarily declare the authorized attribute on each individual action. We can declare it on the class, and now all of the actions that belong to that class will only be available to those roles. Now, I do have this allow anonymous attribute down here, and before, when we were just saying authorize, the allow anonymous allowed anybody to gain access to this allow anonymous action. Now, it turns out that's the same behavior even if you add roles. If you add the allow anonymous attribute on any one of these actions, that will allow or that will basically bypass the authorized attribute even if you've added roles to it. Now, the roles, let's say that I want to have more than one role have access to the member home controller. All you have to do is just put in a comma separated value of roles. So I could say the member role and I could say the admin role that I just added. So I can make it so that all three or all or just these two roles have access to all the different actions or I could specify just one if I wanted to. So that is how we can uh, specify different types of users who can get different uh, who can get access to the different sections of our application. Now, what do you suppose would happen if somebody who is not a member tried to gain access to the member home controller section? Well, I just want to point out before we try that, that if I go to the ASP.users table, let's take a look at the data here. And actually, I didn't want the users, I wanted the ASP.NET user roles table. Sorry about that. Let's take a look at it. Well, we can see that there are no users that have been assigned a role. So right now, even though I have a login here under steve at contoso.com, 
I don't have any roles assigned to me. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I try to access the member home controller section. Let's go ahead and run our application. Now I'm going to go to the the uh, login page that's under members forward slash login. And let's see what happens when I log in here. Steve at Contoso.com. Okay, and log in. Okay, so I got redirected back to the index page, so that's good. That means that I successfully logged in. Now, let's see what happens when I try to go to the member home. Or is it members home? I don't recall off the top of my head. All of a sudden, member home. Okay, not that. There's, it's not plural. Member home. Okay, and I'm going to go to the index action. Hmm. I got returned to account access denied. Return URL member home index. So let's take a look at what Fiddler was seeing in the background. I got logged in. I tried to go to the member home index. And I got a 302 found. But I was redirected to the access denied. And I got a 404 error because I don't currently have an account access denied uh, action, right? That doesn't exist. So I could go ahead and add that. Uh, let's see, account controller. I have to have an access denied. So this is an action that by default, ASP.NET Core identity wants to use when I am not allowed into a particular section. But I didn't code it up yet anywhere in my application. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and do a public uh, action result. And what was the action name? Access denied. OK, so let's go ahead and add that. Access denied. And it also passed along member home index as a return URL in case I wanted to capture where the user was trying to go. So I don't really want to do that. Instead, I'm just going to do return view. And I'm just going to make this a simple little access denied page. So we'll go to our views, go to account, add a new view. And this is an MVC view page called Access Denied. And now we'll just get rid of what's default in here and say H2 Access Denied. Okay, we could do whatever we really wanted to with this particular page, but that should be good enough. And now with that in place, let's try this again. So if I try to go to member home index, And sure enough, there's our access denied. So that's working now. But let's say that rather than going to the default of account access denied, what if I want to change it to a different page? So maybe instead of having it being managed by the account action, uh, I wanted to move this account or, or this access denied page that comes up. I wanted to move it to the members section. How would I do that? So we've done something similar when we were trying to redirect the user to the login page, right? We had a default page that would come up if, uh, you know, if somebody was denied access to a particular section because they hadn't yet logged in. I want to do the same thing, but now I want to do it for access denied. So I'm going to move my access denied HTML to the members section because that's where I actually want it to be managed in my case. Now, it may be different for you guys. You may not want to do it that way. Maybe you want to 
use the account controller to do it, but I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take this out here. I'm going to move it out of the account controller. And I'm going to go to the, did I say members? I wanted to do the member home, didn't I? I, I put it in the, well, I could do members. That's fine. That makes sense to me. So let's do members controller. Okay. And we'll go to, after the login, we'll do right there, access denied. Okay. Now, how do we change this? How do we change it so that the default action is not to go to account controller and look for access denied, but rather it goes to the members controller and looks for access denied? Well, that is found in our startup where just like we did here, where we set the login path to members forward slash login, we can add an additional option here. So I need to do this as an extension of the Lambda expression. So right now the Lambda expression options goes to options, cookies, application cookie, login path. I actually wanna do more operations on inside of this Lambda, okay? So in order to do that, I'm gonna use the curly braces to specify that there are multiple actions being done inside this Lambda expression. And now I'm gonna do options, cookies, application cookie, and look at that, access denied path. Okay, so now we could just say, well, that should be now members access denied. Oops, D E. All right, let's finish that off with a semicolon. Let's save it. And I'm gonna go ahead and restart our application because even though it's gonna compile, since that's a startup item, I'm not sure that it's gonna get that new configuration. So I'm gonna start with without debugging here. And now before I log in or anything, I'm just gonna clear out my fiddler so that we can see all the fresh requests that we get. And let's go to the login page. So it was members forward slash login. I'm gonna log in. Oops, Steve at contoso.com and password. All right, log in. All right, so we successfully logged in. Now what happens if we try to go to member home forward slash index? We get redirected to access denied, but notice the URL now is members forward slash access denied. So that is how you can change the location of whenever you have a de an access denied, you can redirect them to that particular page and put it anywhere that you want inside of your application. So let's just take a quick look here at Fiddler because I wanted to show you this. There's our login, or, you know, here we've, we requested the login. We got redirected to the main page here. Let's get rid of that. So there's our main page. When we tried to access member home, we got a 302 found, but we were redirected to the members access denied, okay? And then that of course pulled up a 200 when we tried to go to it. So there you guys go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you please, if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, you know, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can get notified whenever, whenever there are new videos that come up. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. If you would be interested in early access to our videos, live monthly Q&As, your name in the credits, or one-on-one -on -one sessions, please visit us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash programming made easy. Yeah.